I'll let you know in a second. I see someone! Can see me, hear me, can't see me or hear me. I'm just gonna finish getting ready here for our weird noodle adventure. I see myself. Awesome. I see three people. Let me know where you guys are coming in from so I know uh, if you are night owls who stayed up until 2, 3 a.m. your time because y'all are crazy, but thanks for coming. Happy Monday, I guess, to you folks. Official delicious count is in. <sighs> Delish! Who's working on a Sunday? Get out of here. Is it you, Julia? <laughs> guys, I still don't know what's going on with YouTube Lives. I can't seem to like schedule a live and then click on that same schedule live video and then actually go live from that scheduled one. So I had to make this one off right now, uh, right before we went live. But basically what we're here today is a couple of days ago, was it Friday? It was Friday. A couple of days ago on the Delish YouTube channel, we made some yo tiao and I have all a lot of leftover beauty dough to switch out for cam and I really don't feel like frying any more yotel as delicious as they are so we're gonna see what else we can do with these noodles um Aaron really likes to make bone broth when we're at home and so we just pull whatever dough we have into noodle-esque things and then we drop it in some flavorful broth and that's usually Aaron's lunch or dinner for the day it's a little bit healthier I think than just frying um, and it's a little bit of a different texture and also it's really fun and you get to make really ugly noodles so welcome you want to say hi Aaron hi come, come in there look at the camera no I don't know how cameras work but <laughs> you're the professional um, so we still have a little bit of dough from the batch that I made at midnight for that live and we also have the dough that we made on camera for that live. And what I did was I didn't want two of the same dough. And I also found this really old gluten-free poppy seed starter that I had left in my fridge. Just a random experiment that I made at like 2 a.m. one day. And I don't know why I did it, but I did it. And it was in my fridge and I needed the mason jar. So I put it into this dough and I folded it and you can see there's poppy seeds on the bottom. It's really nice and smooth. It's sliding around. Um, I don't know how a gluten-free starter interferes with the gluten development, but it's not bad, you know? So maybe we'll make some poppy seed noodles too. I don't know. Um, I don't know how long we'll be here. My phone is really old. Its battery life is slowly dwindling over the past year of heavy usage since we're never off our screens anymore. And um, I guess we'll just go until you guys drop off. We'll go until we have some noodles made. What if they stay for 20 hours? Then we will have the modern day Truman Show. <laughs> but I do it voluntarily and in full cognition of what I'm in. Um, what are some comments? Hello from Cairo. Cairo! I, I have it right there, so you should be able to Indonesia. See. You go to sleep, Indonesia. Hey Siri, what time is it in Cairo? It's 2.05 p.m. Oh, that's not too bad. Wait, that's, that's I, said, <laughs> I said, new, that said I, it gave me New York. What time is it in Cairo? In Cairo, Egypt, it's 9.05 9 p.m. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's not bad. You don't get any points for staying up till 9, I'm sorry. But Indonesia! <laughs> Go the hell to sleep. What are you doing? You don't want to end up like me in the last Budget Eats video where I was just completely miserable and very sad and depressed. And if you do that to yourself and you get into a habit of doing it to yourself, I can tell you I'm still doing that to myself. Don't 
don't do as I do, do as I say. I'm putting a little bit of flour in a little pinch bowl just so that we um, don't have noodles going everywhere. But basically when you're working with a dough and you want to use that gluten structure to pull it into a strand that's thinner but still sturdy and you don't want to break it, what you really don't want to do right before you make your noodles is knead it or fold it because agitation right now, you can see that it's really loose. Like I'm barely dragging on it and it's already elongating. If you knead it at this point and you don't give it half an hour to an hour to rest, that gluten structure will be so, so tight. It'll be like a tight rubber band and then when you go to stretch it, it'll break on you, which is fine. You know, you can make tiny little nuggets of noodles and it'll still be bouncy and great. And it might actually be a lot more al dente. So if you like chewy noodles, maybe like do work your dough. I don't know. We're making trash food today, hashtag trash food, uh, meaning I'm not working off of a recipe. I'm just using whatever leftovers I have in my kitchen and I'm making a meal out of it, which is honestly most of what I do every day at home. Erin, why did you have to put your computer right more at my nicest? Thank you. So, how this works is you should put on a pot of water for me. <laughs> um, these noodles, I usually tend to pull and drop right into boiling water. That way they cook as I go and we can fish them out. It's a nice little time where Aaron and I get to bond and hang out for 10 minutes of the day. Um, you know, the rest of the time I'm just like yelling at him uh, and he takes it. I don't know why, but he... Also during the time as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, should we cook them in my stock? Oh. That's why I brought it out. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to waste this water though. Can I have the little tiny pot for myself though? Yeah. Okay, so Aaron will be cooking his noodles in his homemade broth. You want to show the camera your homemade broth? It just looks like brown water because it's broth. But it's brown water. Yeah. It has a layer of nice fatty foam uh, flavor on top. It's floating, but soon it'll melt and you won't see it anymore. But this is like marrow. It's made marrow. from, uh, I think, pork neck bone uh, simmered for about eight hours. You're guessing it's neck bone. I think it's neck bone. I think the bag said neck bone. Um, so yeah, do you want all the fat on there or do you want less fat? Uh, we can do less fat since I'm going to use the rest of the coconut. Um. Okay. Yep. Are you taking any more comments? Hello from Peru! We love trash food, yay! Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm just going oh. to... Nez is asking why the stash is back. Because I felt like it. Hi, Nez. <laughs> um, we're just going to skim the fat away from the opening of the jar, and then we'll pour it slowly. Tell me when, Aaron. Keep going. Uh, stop for now. Let's see how much that is. Yeah, that should be good. Okay, so mm -hmm. we're going into a, I don't know, eight inch pan, about one and a half inch deep with broth. We also have some um, leftover coconut cream that has been open since mid-February, and I honestly don't know why it's still good. Usually when you open coconut cream, it goes bad within the week, but this one still smells good, so we'll go in here. Do you want to put some spices in it today so it can soak into the noodles? Uh, yeah. Why don't you just use your creativity for that? You Go want crazy. me to concoct your noodles? Yeah, you're the chef. I thought I was here to just pull noodles, dude. Well, I haven't put the spices in before. You can try. This is more than I signed up for. We're going to go in with a little bit of garlic powder, I guess. Um, okay. And... I'm gonna go in with a little bit of smoked paprika because we got this smoked paprika from a trip to Spain like two years ago. Ages ago. And it says good until March 2020. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's not as flavorful as they used to be, 
when we first got it, a lot of spices kind of expire, not in the way that it'll make you sick, just in the way that it'll lose its flavor over time and it will become less intense and less flavorful and less dimensional and you should just use it as soon as you can. Um, did you salt your broth? It's well salted, yeah. Okay, no salt. Um, we'll go in with a little bit of powdered red pepper, nice tasty. That should be enough. That's not enough. That's definitely not enough for you. What else? A pinch of oregano. Is that enough spices for you yet? That's good, yeah. Okay. Great. We'll set this to a low simmer. I'll just give it a stir every now and then. And you'll be eating this out of your favorite soup bowl, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. This is Aaron's favorite soup bowl. I got it in Greenpoint, Brooklyn at a random junkie thrift store for I think three or five bucks. I can't remember. I was with a friend before the pandemic shopping this and um, now it has a chip in it. Don't we all have a chip in it by now? Um, and I'll move my spoon off into this bowl because if you leave a metal thing on top of a metal thing that's on top of fire, that metal thing will get very hot and then you'll forget five minutes later when you reach for the spoon and then you'll burn your fingers and then you'll be very sad and then you'll curse at yourself and then you'll be very sad again. Um, so we're not gonna do that. I guess I'll put your broth here. I'll put my little water thing there. All right, cool. Noodle time, huh? Do we have any more questions? Do you like mango? Of course I like mango. It's sticky rice. I love sticky rice anything. Um, hey, Florida. Hey, Quebec. Mustache looks amazing. Thanks, Thank Mia. you. What kind of pants? He's talking about me, not you. I mean, I have a <laughs> kick-ass mustache, too, and you guys need to comment on that sometime because, you know, when I forget to thread on Sunday night and then I go to film on Monday morning, if you look really close, that stash. Um, what? what kind of pots and pans do you use? These are my beloved IKEA pans. We got them when uh, we were still living with a roommate and we were paying 800 bucks for a room together, cramped. We were living in the same room as our kitchen. So we've upgraded to a slightly better apartment since then. But haven't upgraded pans. Haven't upgraded pans because why do you need to upgrade pans when they've served you so well? They're like very nicely burnt on the bottom. Like very thin construction, very cheap. I think this three pack of pots costs us like maybe 14 plus tax. Literally the cheapest possible pans you can buy at IKEA. It sounds like the Tin Man's hat um, and it probably is the Tin Man's hat and it says it's stainless but you could definitely see that there's spots in there. But you know what? It works, it's great for popcorn. Uh, because the heat just goes through it really fast. It's great for toasting spices. You don't need to wait forever for the pan to get hot, but you do need to keep your shit moving to avoid burning. So thin, thin cheap pots, usable. You just need to uh, offset it with time. As always, when you skip out on money, you have to put in more time. That's just the equation. How long have you had your IKEA pots for? Uh, like eight years? Something like that. I feel like we got them maybe in um, 2014 or 2015 latest, so at least six or seven years. Um, I saw you didn't roast the bones for the bone broth. I was wondering why. I feel like roasting bones for bone broth might be like an American thing. When we created a bone broth recipe for Delish, I, I believe uh, either Mackenzie or Lauren created that recipe, I think, and we roasted bones for it, and then we boiled them, and that's supposed to bring out more roasted flavors, but... Instead of doing a full roast, I just, uh, like, sizzled them for a while in a pan first. Yeah, Aaron does a sizzling the thing. I do the Chinese thing that my mom kind of taught me to cook with meats, is just, like, blanch the meat first to get rid of all the extra juices that aren't so fresh. Kind of like almost washing the meat, but in temperatured water. And then I go in with the uh, broth water to really bring out that pure flavor. I go for like a very clean taste. But if you like a toastier taste broth, toast it. Uh, who am I to stop you? There are so many ways to make food. You really don't have to follow any one way of making anything. 
Can you guys see this cutting board? Um, it's on camera. Okay. It's not so super close, I just but... cut a piece of dough and I'm kind of stretching it out a little bit, just a little bit. So you can see it's very bouncy. It's very pleasurable. And at this point, if you just want to like keep stretching it out, you can hand tear it and that'll be hand torn noodles. Um, so what makes it pleasurable dough for you? What makes it pleasurable dough? Yeah, you called it pleasurable. <laughs> is this not pleasing to you? Um, a pleasurable dough for me is extensible, it's pliable, it's soft, it's giving, but it has its limits. It lets you know when you've stretched it too far. So it has, you know, it's set up nice little boundaries for you, but also can compromise. That's what I look for in a relationship. People have been asking about your knife, or your oh, knives in general. Yes, my knife. Um, this knife I got from Brooklyn Kitchen uh, in a Hell's Kitchen location that has now closed. Rest in peace. Um, I got it. Side with the kanji. I got it from my very first uh, cooking job, and it cost me like I think like 109 maybe with tax, which is pretty cheap for a good Japanese-made Santoku knife. This is a. Uh, high carbon knife, which means it rusts pretty easily if you don't dry it right away, but it, it's supposed to hold its edge very well, so you don't have to sharpen it as much. And I probably should sharpen this soon, but it's still quite sharp enough for my home cooking needs. Um, so I'm just going to slice the dough into skinny, skinny slices, and then we'll stretch it. I like to dust it with a little bit of flour just to prevent them from sticking to each other. And I also like to separate them on the board so that they don't kind of like melt back into each other as I work because I'm not a professional noodle puller. I'm literally just making some hashtag trash food noodles and uh, I'm not skilled enough to fling flour everywhere in a artistic, controlled, masterly way. So I just take one strand. I try to dust a little bit of flour on top, and then I take it and I hold it by its two ends, maybe with a couple of fingers on each end to make sure I'm not like dragging on the weakest part of the cut. And I just wait for it to kind of flubber itself out into a skinnier noodle. And know that whatever size your noodle ends up being now, once you boil it, it'll bloat to at least double this thickness. So if you think this looks too skinny right now, once it boils, it'll look different. Um, of course, you can put this in a very well uh, floured container and boil them all at once like professionals do. But like I said, this is normally just like a time for Aaron and I to chill. And so what I tend to do is I'll shape a noodle, I'll drop it into our simmering broth like so. And Aaron will go ahead and take his chopsticks and just give it a nice swirl so that nothing is sticking. And then we'll eyeball it. If he wants a tender noodle, we'll go for two to three minutes until it's like very soft. Whoop, I just broke one. That's okay. Um, so now it's two noodles. Now it's two noodles and shorter noodles, which means it's easier to slurp. Um, but if you want al dente noodles, just go for a minute. It'll be kind of still denser in the middle. So, and it'll dub double in width, not length, to clarify. Oh, did I say length? No, somebody's asking. Yes, it'll just like bloat, basically, once it hits the water. So you can see that this noodle is pretty skinny, and this noodle is pretty fat, but that's, uh, that's why I said we're making ugly nudes, guys. I don't lie. I don't misadvertise. If I promise you ugly things, that's what we're going to make. That's why I'm here. <laughs> I've seen worse, honestly. Um, and this is fun. It's just fun. I broke it again. That's okay. And that's all. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Was this worth staying up until 2 a.m. for, guys? I told you not to do it. You didn't listen to me. I don't know why you don't listen to me. But this is why I don't have kids, because I know they won't listen to me. You're getting a cat though, so what if it doesn't listen That's to you? That's not happened yet. What if the cat doesn't listen to you? The cat won't listen to me. 
I know what I'm signing up for. Again, I like things that give me clear boundaries. So. And that's that's a nude. Do you want to fish those out or no? Do you want to let them? It's getting very distracted. These aren't floating up too much today, somewhat. What is in your noodle dough? Um, this this dough is the dough that we made in the Yo Tiao Live at, on the Delish page that we did on Friday. So there's um, a bit of all-purpose flour, cornstarch, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of salt, a little bit of baking powder, a little bit of baking soda, and we rubbed it in a little bit of oil to prevent it from drying out and then three quarters cup water to tie it together into a nice little pliable dough and this dough is now um two and a half days old and it's been in the fridge we just pulled it out maybe 20 30 minutes before we went live so that it could come up to room temp a little bit but obviously if you're just making noodles you probably don't need baking powder in it baking powder was more for the yo tiao to kind of uh, puff up in the frying oil, but we're just repurposing this dough into a different dish because as delicious as yo tiao is, I really can't eat days in a row. I can. Yes, you can. I also just don't feel like frying. Even though I reuse my frying oil, it's kind of a pain in the butt to like soap it up and um, scrub it out of the pot and I feel like I'm wasting a lot of dish soap and I just don't feel like doing it, you know? Hi June, how did you decide to pursue... I missed a question. Somebody <laughs> pursue Somebody it? changed their mind after. No, so. I think they just got bumped. Okay. Uh, I'm guessing food? Yeah, culinary. Um, I decided by process of elimination, I went to college, I graduated with a degree in English Lit and minored in Religion and Education, and I thought I would be a teacher. And I went to China to teach for a year on a fellowship right after graduation, and that's where I met Aaron, and I burnt out really bad because I was teaching in a bilingual setting. I had to teach not only English to Chinese students, but I also had to teach science and art curriculum in Chinese to Chinese students and I just felt like I was failing the students and as a first year teacher in a foreign country even though I was born there I feel very Americanized. It was just a lot to take in and I felt really um, inadequate and I felt like I also couldn't stay in China for a number of reasons both political and environmental. The pollution there is really bad guys, really bad. Um, I had a lot of sinus infections the year that I lived there. The last one was so bad that I had a fever for four days and I thought I might actually die and I thought like if I'm dying I don't want to die in China because my parents worked really hard to get me out of here and um, I came back to New York and my mom was like, told you so and I was like, yeah, I know mom, I know. Um, and then when I came back to New York, I did some social work. It was for a project called Project Hope. It was FEMA funded. It was around the time that Hurricane Sandy hit and I was stationed on Coney Island doing some social outreach, trying to get people some um, connections and resources that help them get back from the destruction that hit the city. And unfortunately, Project, Project Hope's aim was to get psychological resources to these people. But if you know Maslow's hierarchy of needs, a lot of these people still didn't have like mold free housing. They still had, they were living with mold. Like we would go into someone's house and it would smell like mold right away. Um, kind of that like sweet fungal smell. And you know, when people don't have their basic needs met and we're trying to push psychological help, it's not a bad thing. It's just not what they need at that moment. And I felt, like our project was hitting a lot of bureaucracy and um, kind of starting to spam the community and I burnt out. Like red tape is real, red tape is bad. Uh, I don't know why we do this crap, but I couldn't take it. Unfortunately, I was not strong enough to be a social worker for longer than 10 months, so I quit. And the last thing that I wanted to try out after education and social work was food. And living in New York, it's really easy to get into food because restaurants uh, are rampant 
or were rampant before the pandemic, and they are also rampant with cheap labor. So you'll get paid minimum wage, and um, you kind of just learn on the spot, which is what I decided to do because after college, I had basically no savings, um, and I thought I can't, I can't afford to pay through culinary school again. I don't want to pay for school again. I don't want to be back in school again. I don't learn well in a school setting. So I just decided to start working and my parents were not happy with it, especially being a East Asian parents who want their kid to be like successful, quote unquote, in life and, you know, be financially stable. Um, earning minimum wage in a very high cost of living city is not very soothing for a parent to see their child go through. And um, that's how I ended up in food. So that's your life story. That is my life story. I hope you enjoyed story time. Would you use the same dough for Byung Byung noodles? Um, I don't know if the gluten is strong enough for you to make that slapping motion and stretch it without breaking. As you saw, I just broke quite a few noodles. If you go gentle, it is, you know, stretchable, but if you watch videos for Biang Biang noodles, they basically take a um, strip of dough, like this wide, and then they basically stretch it by slapping it on the surface repeatedly, and then uh, once you get to that right thickness of noodle, they hand tear it in half and throw it in and it's like nice and thick and chewy, which we can do, as you see, we are doing it. So I just don't know at what point this dough will break because it has cornstarch in it and cornstarch doesn't have gluten in it because it's starch and not protein. Um, it's a weaker dough than usual, I think, but that doesn't mean you can't, it just means you'll break it sooner. Uh, rather so you you can you can make noodles out of probably freaking sourdough bread dough uh it just depends on what kind of texture your noodle will be you know it'll still be a noodle unless you're like i don't know a gatekeeper and you're like that's not a noodle but to me anything that gets stretched is made of flour or i guess any other grain and can be boiled is a noodle. So. Yes, I have listened to Mondo Grosso. I love it. It's like really relaxing music. What artist song comes to mind that helped you through that last week? Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I um, post a lot of songs. I listen to a lot of songs. I have a lot of playlists on Spotify. Can I give you these Biang Biang noodles? Yeah, let's try it. I was so, going to suggest cooking a whole one of those. We'll just split that in half. Pro split. And we'll drop it in. Ring noodle. Ta-da! Cool. Uh, that was my fake ass Biang Biang noodle attempt. Um, why did you decide? A process of elimination. You just, I've always liked food, um, and after trying out other career paths and not having the patience for them or feeling so distraught over my lack of perceived su success in them, I just went on to the next one. Maybe if I were older and more mature, I would have stuck with teaching or social work. I don't know, but. Oh, this, nice and curly, that's getting old. Yeah, this is, this is the road that life takes you on, and, um, you know, I feel like a lot, a lot of my early 20s was, I kind of went through a arc that I think a lot of people go through. It's like, I don't know what I'm doing, but this is great. I'm going to explore. I'm going to have so much fun discovering who I am, and then by the time you hit your mid-20s, you're like, WTF, um, how come I still don't know who I am? How come I still haven't figured out what I'm good at, how come I don't have a career, and like, I don't know, some people never have a career. I don't know if food is gonna be my career. It is my job now, and I like it, and I enjoy food, and I love talking to all of you guys and hanging out and kind of building this community of people who like, like to commiserate together and 
cook stuff and eat stuff and be nice to each other, but do I want to do this for the rest of my life? For now, I think so. But who am I to say who I will be in a few years? So. What modifications would you make to this dough for dumplings, to paraphrase some of these questions? To make dumplings? Yeah. I think you need a much drier dough to be able to shape dumplings. You can see that this dough is like so sticky and soft. You would not have a great time trying to keep your stuffing of the dumpling in this dough. Um, you would not have a great time pinching it shut. You would not have a great time, period, making dumplings with this dough. This dough is meant to be um, shaped loosely and then cooked immediately. Dumplings require a lot more shaping, so to make a modification to this dough, I would just knead in a lot more flour. And if you um, watch the video that I did on Delish with Jackie, you'll see that that lump of dough that we use for the dumplings is kind of like a modeling clay, like Play-Doh. And this dough is very much not that. You want a dough that is sturdy, that you can roll out and control the shape of, and also fold easily for dumplings. How's that looking? Is, that, is that thick enough for you? Yeah, it's... Looks, it, it does look a lot like a, looks like a bit crinklier beyond that. Well, yeah, it's not a smooth dough, yeah. but it has much weaker gluten formation. Um, does it make you uncomfortable in any way to share your private life with the internet? No, my mom's always criticized me for sharing too much as a kid. Like, she told me that I was a big mouth. I probably talk too much, as you've noticed. And I have no problem being an open book, as you've noticed for better or worse. Um, I I know the phrase has been tossed around a lot and it like kind of makes you, I don't know, sneer a little bit at it, but radical transparency, I feel like is something that I strongly believe in, that I feel like if everyone actually spoke what's on their mind, that yes, we would be shocked and uncomfortable at first, but that if we make that culture more of an accepted thing, that would change a lot of the dynamics in our society right now. Um, it would make taboos go away a lot more. It would make people less afraid to share things. It would embolden people, which I think is something that our society has been set up in such a way that it doesn't want to encourage people to be emboldened for a variety of reasons, <clears throat> oppression in a lot of different ways. Um, so do I share a lot? Yeah, I do. Do you like listening to them? Maybe, and if you don't, Hey, it's your black mirror. You can shut it off anytime and just look at your pretty little reflections in there. June, can you speak Hokkien? I can't. I only speak Mandarin. I don't even understand Cantonese. Like, I don't know any other dialects of Chinese, unfortunately. I, if I had a superpower, I would wish I could understand all the languages of the world and also talk to alpacas, because I really want to know what's going on in their little brains. Like, literally little brains. Is that enough noodles, or do you want more? I think we are approaching enough at this point for me. You can, I guess, you know, do some plain water noodles if you want. Um, I'll save that dough for you, since you said you didn't want the poppy seed one. Do you want me to try to shape a poppy seed one for you in your broth? Um, to taste one? Are you going to cook them anyways? I mean, we have the dough. I'm going to cook them eventually. Yeah, let's try one. What does Aaron do for a living? That is a secret question. Nothing right now. Aaron, Aaron is a... Uh, I'm helping June right now. Yeah, Aaron has been a stay-at-home dad to no child, but <laughs> it's himself. A, it's an easy job. It's um, just another side effect of our lovely world of 2020. My job right now feels like waiting. I think everyone's job feels like waiting. Yeah, I'm a professional waiter, but not spelled that way. Wait, is that the same spelling? Yeah, I think so. I think it would be the same spelling. Um, when are you guys getting a cat? Will be a cat? Will we'll be a cat then, yeah. We're uh, hoping for one soon, actually. We've started applying um, for cats, and we're hoping to get a senior cat named Fred. But Fred has a lot of health issues right now, so he's staying with his 
foster mom for the time being until he gets proper diagnosis and then we can actually figure out what we're signing up yeah. for and be prepared to we, take care of him because we don't want to accept a cat especially because I'm working from home like it's really it's really rough managing all the different areas of your life in one can I just splash water through this yeah in one small space so as soon as we know what's going on with Fred and we know that he's in hopefully a stabilized condition We'll be ready to welcome him. Yeah, we'd be first-time cat owners, so we don't want to kill him immediately when we get him. Right. We'd like to have him for a few years before... Or at least a few weeks. Yeah. Do you think you want this... Um, yeah, we can do a, a, a live style. So this is the dough I'm slapping with poppy seed, and you can see it broke on me uh, because of the weakened gluten formation. And it's noticeably softer than the other dough, for sure, but... I'm not a chef. For some reason, this live stream and last one, lots of people have asked if I'm also a chef. Because I call you a chef. Yeah, no, I've, I'm just a home cook. I just mess around with whatever ingredients I find in the kitchen, similar to June, except I don't get paid for it. Yeah. Pay me for it. Uh, but, um, no, I trailed at a restaurant once. That I worked at. Yeah. Uh, if you don't know, trail means you basically have like a one day interview there. And uh, it was fun, but I could also tell it was going to be extremely difficult as a job. Way too difficult for me. I don't like difficult things, so I didn't end up doing it. But I do do a lot of home cooking. I sort of taught myself in college growing up basically just eating like chicken tenders and pizza from Wegmans. If anybody knows Wegmans every day, and then uh, went to college and had to figure out how to cook for myself. Uh, chili powder. I use whatever chili powder I can get my hands on, but uh, this. Aim it there. Yeah. There we go. Oh, it's mirrored. That's weird. Okay. This is what I uh, have now. It's the famous red pepper, nice tasty. We got a while back for one of June's budget weeks and uh, it's a Korean chili pepper. And yeah, it's just really good. It's an all around flavor. It's not super rich and aromatic like a lot of chili powders, but it does have capsaicin and that gets the job done for me. Guys, this is a thick boy. Holy schmoles. I'm gonna turn the heat off. I'm gonna let the carryover cooking get through the noodles because this one looks very soft. It almost looks like, yeah. um, wow, it looks like bread. Can you see that structure where it's breaking at the chopstick? It's almost, it's not silky or smooth, it's like almost aerated. And I think that's because I added the gluten-free sourdough discard in it because that's essentially yeast and yeast puffs and aerates your dough which is why we basically just made some bread noodles. <laughs> so can you make noodles out of sourdough bread dough? I guess if you call these noodles, yes, you can. Uh, can you talk about how much your mother taught you about cooking? My mom taught me bits and pieces. I, I think my mom doesn't consider herself a cook. She doesn't actually, she insists she doesn't enjoy cooking. Um, but she cooks because she's a mom and she has to feed her kids and Obviously being her child. I love her cooking more than anything and before the pandemic I used to visit my mom almost every week I used to like take my laundry there to wash at her washing machine because she has a house on the edge of Queens and she I can line dry there now that I live in a tiny apartment unfortunately, I have to like contribute to the high energy output of clothes drying machines, which I absolutely hate, but I also don't want moldy clothes. But back when I visited her and did laundry at her place, she would take like, I don't know, three to four hours to cook me five to six dishes, which was highly unnecessary, but moms be moms, you know? Um, and she made amazing things. She would make me some stir fried broccoli that I love. She would make like eggplant dishes. She would make just a lot of things. Um, tomato and egg, one of my favorites from her, and I learned to uh, blanch my meat, especially my bones, 
before I make a broth or before I continue cooking it and braising it for a long time to get that pure flavor of meat. I learned little things from her, which if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know I post sometimes emails from her about what she thought I did wrong on my shows, which yes, you know, lifelong learning, we're always learning. We will never be masters and that's a good thing because why do you want to know everything? What's the fun in that? So my mom keeps teaching me every day. Um, and I don't think she's taught me a lot about cooking, but I think she's also taught me a lot about life. And that also is transferable into cooking. So thanks, Mom. Um, do you know if Delish is hiring for remote jobs? I don't know. Um, we are always taking on freelance labor, so depending on what your specialty is, maybe. But I actually don't know anything about the hiring process, um, and I also don't know what positions we have available. Um, especially that we're working remote now, it, like communication has been increasingly decentralized, as I'm sure everybody can relate to, and. Uh, yeah, I don't have that information. Sorry. Um, well, my news are done. Your news are done. You can eat it. Okay. June, for the kitchen that you made in your last budget eats, did you use a teaspoon each of the 14 spices? I happen to have all of them. Just wasn't sure how much to add. Yeah, it was between a half teaspoon to a teaspoon. I don't really know. But if you actually look on delish.com or if you just search delish June kitchen You'll see that I have a kitchen recipe, which is what I spun off of for the Budget Eats, and I do have measured amounts in there for you, so you can refer to that recipe. Um, for you guys, what is a typical breakfast for you guys? What would be an extravagant breakfast? Guys, you think we eat breakfasts? Like, I don't even know what time Aaron wakes up on a day-to-day -day basis. I kind of drag myself out of bed between 8.30 and 10.30 depending on if I have to shoot that day. I usually just wake up to the smell of June's cooking, so she decides what I'm having for breakfast. Breakfast is literally always leftovers, or apples and peanut butter. Yeah. Um, if, so simple. If people think we sit down at like 9 a.m. at a table with, yeah. you know, a slice of to toast and like, you know. This is our apartment, even... <laughs> guys. Like some, some uh, I think I read one comment that was like, this apartment looks better, bigger than a studio, and you're right, it is. It's market it as a junior one bed which means we have this kitchen room that is separate from our living slash bedroom combo and in that living slash bedroom combo we have Aaron's desk, Aaron's ginormous computer screen, we have our bed, we have three leather cushions that I saved from the eighth grade when my parents moved to a new house in Forest Hills and um, we couldn't fit our brand new leather sofa in there and I cried my heart out because I was like you didn't let me jump on that sofa and now you're throwing it out like why? So I ran downstairs and I grabbed all the cushions and I still have those cushions to this day. We don't have the sofa anymore, unfortunately. It did not fit. Um, and then we have some uh, workout equipment like dumbbells and stuff and that's it. We don't have a table. That's why we never sit down to eat because uh, I just sometimes sit on the floor or I bring a chair up to a small desk that I have now in the foyer now because we're working from home. Um, and Aaron eats at his desk, and that's where we eat. What's your favorite Indian dish? Chickpea anything, um, but also mango lassi is like so good. Why are you skipping the bread? Bread? Oh my god, the bread! Mm. There's a place called Taste of Punjab near JFK Airport. Oh my god their bread is amazing if you live in queens or you want to take the train into jfk adjacent area and go to taste of punjab they have wild hours i think they're open from 5 p.m to 5 a.m probably for a lot of the uh, taxi cab drivers and the layover crowd um but if you go freaking order their bread it's so good it's the best bread I ate that year, and I remember having my mind blown because we're re we were eating at like midnight or 1 a.m. Mm -hmm. before our flight, and I just, I was so tired and sleepy, but like that bread, man. Ooh. So good. June, do you like Nutella? Yes, I do like Nutella. 
I haven't seen you eat Nutella in forever. I don't eat Nutella because I can't buy Nutella because if I buy the Nutella, then I become the Nutella. Nutella or peanut butter? I already know the answer to this though. I actually think if I had to choose right now, I would choose Nutella. What? Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I think I broke sometime in the past two months, like especially broke, and I haven't yearned for peanut butter in a way. Um, You're not the same person I know anymore. What's I, going on? Yeah, I think at the end of December, my depression started sliding really bad, and uh, in January, I hit a new low, and in February, I kind of plateaued and stayed down there, and I lost the desire for peanut butter. Um, but Aaron opened a jar of peanut butter and I ate two tablespoons of it and I was like, ooh, I remember why I like peanut butter. But I don't yearn for it the same way. Have I tried any spicy challenges? I haven't. I really like spicy food and everybody's always messaging me being like, uh, you know, do the spicy one chip challenge or whatever. Or, you know, Hot Wings sells the set. Uh, where they... Hot ones? Hot ones. Yeah. Apparently they sell a hot sauce set where, you know, it goes progressively increasing and you can do like hot ones at home. I'm not into spicy food just for the pure heat, believe it or not. I'm in it because it tastes good to me. So I don't really do like the extreme spicy stuff. I just like chilies, the flavor and cooking. I like them for the culinary application. Where have you guys traveled and where would you travel to if you could? Uh, we actually had a trip scheduled for Lebanon for April of last year. That we had to cancel and really bummed about that. We've gone to Italy, Spain, Portugal, we've gone to Japan, we've gone to Chengdu, China, um, Hanoi, Hong Kong, while it was still Hong Kong. Um, really feeling for Hong Kong right now, uh, really sad about what's happening there. I really hate to see history repeat and I really hate to see the bad guys win over and over again, but that is what's happening in Hong Kong right now. Uh, utterly depressing, utterly helpless and hopeless, and frick, man, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen to Hong Kong. It's probably going to get swallowed up by China way ahead of its schedule, um, and I hate it. I hate seeing that happen. Um, but yeah, I miss, I miss traveling so much. I wish I could go everywhere and anywhere, and, um, and we can't, but hopefully soon we'll get our crap together. Relaxed wants you to turn on Super Chats so they can give you money while you stream. Oh, I don't even know what that is, guys. <laughs> June doesn't know what money is. Guys, if you want to give me money, please just donate to a local food bank right now. Uh, there are people who are struggling, struggling to survive. And I hate to make it sound sad, but, like, life is freaking sad. So, please, thank you so much for wanting to contribute to me. But, as you can see, Aaron and I are not struggling. Um, and we're even hoping to have, you know, the time, resources, and energy to take care of a cat soon. So we're, we're doing pretty well. We're not, we don't really need the money right now, but there are people who do need the money. And I highly encourage you to, if you have the resources, try to throw some bucks to uh, people who can't, can't even eat or have a place to live. I like how people are self-censoring their own messages. <laughs> Somebody said you looked like you were about to cry. <laughs> I, I, Change their mind. <laughs> yeah, I get very emotional very fast. Um, it could be the, the depression or I'm just a naturally emotional person. I don't know. It takes very little for me to cry. So don't be alarmed. Crying is okay. Crying is natural. It means I'm alive and I'm feeling. And so, no need to censor yourself unless you're saying really mean, bullyish things. Then yes, please do censor yourself. Um, somebody asked before if we will ever make gulab jamun from scratch, mm -hmm. and I don't think I will because I actually don't like gulab jamun. I'm sorry, but Aaron loves it. So he you can you can make it for next Aaron week. I really don't want to fry stuff, guys. <laughs> um. June oxtails are very pricey, but have you ever had it or cooked it? Yes, um, a friend drove us up to the Hudson Valley and we had oxtail at this Jamaican place. And I, I legit think I never had like Jamaican food before that day. And we had this oxtail thing and it was delicious. It was like so spiced, but sweet. It's got that like allspice berry taste to it. And it's just nuanced, 
the gelatinous cartilagey nature of the oxtail meat and the flavor of the bone that you like suck on and then the cabbage that went along into that curry. Ooh, so good. Um, what would you give, what advice would you give your younger self? Heck man, I don't have any advice for anyone. Um, I wanted to say care less, but also don't care less because I think if we all started caring less, um, the world would be even sadder to be in, but maybe we can rephrase that to be care less about success and care less about what you think you should be doing or you should be, period, um, and just be. My advice for my younger self is uh, buy Apple stock and Bitcoin as much as you can. <laughs> Or uh, if you're June, don't buy anything. Money is imaginary. It is not useful until you are making your life better with it. So think about what you would need to make your life better first and then earn the money that you need to make that happen. But money is a tool. You use it. Don't let money use you. Um, Did you thrift that shirt? This shirt I bought in college from Land's End and I'm very sad. I finally changed out of my like t-shirt that I've been wearing for six days in a row because I was like, you are a depressing slob and you make me sad. I said that to myself in the mirror uh, without exchanging any words, just through the eyeballs. And then I dropped turmeric all over it. So now it's stained. Um, it's quite nice. It's 100% cotton. It's lovely. It's a great shade of lavender. My mom even approved of this fashion choice, which only happens like every once in a blue moon. So I was very proud of it at the time. But I will continue to wear it and love it. And this just means that now that it's stained, I can keep staining it and not feel bad about staining it because it's been 10 years since I've had it. I think I deserve to like turn it into a junky, comfy shirt, so no big. Um, yeah, I think a lot of us are going through depression and anxiety and I, more than ever, and I, I, don't, I don't see why that's a surprise to anyone. Have you been here for the past year? Have you seen? Um, so yes, it's a hard time. Do your families give you grief for being unprofessional, un conventional eaters, no set time. Oh yeah, my mom, my mom is worried for me day to night, seven days a week, 365 days a year for the rest of my life. That is what moms do, but like, you will get grief from everyone for living the way that you do, no matter what you choose to do, and you will never do anything right. And the time that we accept that you will never do anything right is the time that you get on with just living, so. Turmeric stains can be removed by leaving it under the sun. It will go away after a few days. Eh, I'll try it sometime. I barely get sun. Maybe that's a good uh, motivating reason for me to go outside on this shirt. Also, we live in a New York City apartment. Where are we going to find sun? <laughs> Just stick it on the sidewalk and hope it's still there a few days later. Uh, wow, there's a hundred people watching right now. I thought there was going to be five. Yay! So happy you guys are tuning in. Um, I'm so happy to just hang out. Let me know if you want to do this again. Let me know what leftovers you have in your fridge. Let me know random stuff you have in your pantry. Let me know down in the comments below what you want to see on our next ugly food episode um, where we make trash food over and over again. Do you take vitamin D supplements? Yes. When Aaron remembers to reach for it because it's in a high cabinet that I can't reach, we do take our vitamin Ds. Um, where did you purchase your sports? Yes. Okay, let's talk about this, guys. A very highly asked question. This one is a, a birthday gift from Aaron. It is my favorite gift I've ever received. It is from Snow Peak. This is a wonderful titanium spork. It is beautiful. It comes in blue and green and just plain silver. I don't know if it comes in pink. It might come in pink. This is like the purple color. It's worn off around the edges. It's been a few years since I've had it, but it continues to be my favorite eating utensil and it's ever. Like a, it feels like a feather. It's delightful. It's so delightful. Um, 
This mermaid spoon is from Fish's Eddie in the Flatiron District in Manhattan. This used to be when Fish's Eddie still sold affordable utensils and when they had good design. Sorry to crap on them, but uh, I think their designs and originality have slipped and they've also gotten very highly politicized, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I feel like playing into the liberal left is very pop and sellable right now, so I get it. But also, bring back this, please. And uh, we love, you know, RBG, but we also like mermaid spoons. You sounded like a right winger there, too. <laughs> How much would it shock you if I were a right winger? No, guys, I, I will vote for literally any candidate who uh, promises to raise the minimum wage, give everyone universal health care, and actually start caring about people like they're people and not just pawns. But that's too much to ask, I think. I would love to see some leftover cheap dessert idea. Japanese food, please. Um, how long have you and Aaron been together? Ten years. We've known each other since 2011, which is the year we graduated from college. Um, do you have any advice for college new grads? God, I don't even know what the job market is like for you guys. Like, it was bad when we graduated that year. It was supposedly just like the slump year to graduate and get spat out of college. I don't even know what it looks like right now. Probably dismal. I'd say right now the trend seems to be go independent, go embrace what you want to do, what you do best, and what you are passionate about because everything is becoming so decentralized during this time. Um, it's a scary time. And especially if you're just getting out of college, like it's a lot to figure out. It's a lot to handle. It's probably more than any of us can even wrap our minds around right now. So trying to find your identity and who you are and who you want to be and who you want to do in the midst of all of this, I don't have advice for you other than try to have fun and try to survive and try to balance making money with being content, which is a lifelong struggle. My advice if you actually want a job after college, is drop whatever major you're on now and switch to computer science. <laughs> there you go, Aaron, for the real shit. Um, yeah, I'm trying to give actually helpful advice. <laughs> you're giving philosophical Yeah, advice. I mean, he went to NYU, I went to a liberal arts school, so that's where our, that's where our brains are, you know? Different people, different advice, none of which is helpful or useful. Mine is. It, Life is highly dependent on luck. How lucky you are determines where you go. It's not really any time about how skilled you are, how smart you are, despite what we've been told. The world is not a meritocracy. Uh, it is unfair, so. Jeff Bezos is not a billion times smarter or better than any of us. Yeah. I mean, who would I rather have over for dinner? A hundred shelter cats or Jeff Bezos? Maybe if I could put something in his food, I would take that opportunity. I do play games, but just by myself or with my brother, uh, like co-op games. Uh, I'm not really into Twitch streaming, but thank you for the suggestion. Skincare routine. Oh. Yes, we are both 1989. Now you know my age. Now you can steal my social security number. It's one eight four two three seven two zero zero. Yeah. Surprising that you know my social security <laughs> number and I don't. Um, my skincare routine uh, on days where depression is bad is don't wash your face. Um, but I do wash it at night in the shower. I use a cleanser. I use a tea tree oil kind of like um, Castile soap based thing. But then I also dilute it with some uh, lavender scented oil and I shake it together so it's like an emulsion and I just like slather it all over my face and I rub it in for like 30 seconds probably way too rough and then I rinse it off and that's it and then after I get out of the shower I'll put on um, either some cleansing oil or some like blemish oil something oil based and then I'll smooth it over uh, with moisturizer if it's getting particularly dry but most days I skip the moisturizer and in the morning, if I'm filming and I don't want to look like a POS, um, I will rinse my face with warm water 
for a half a minute just to wash off all of that residual oil that I put on at night. And then I'll go in with um, like a liquid primer of sorts. It's also like a little sloshy emulsion thing. And then I'll put on some moisturizer and then I'll put some blush on for you guys just so I don't look like dead, just literally dead. Um, and if I feel like it, I'll put on some lipstick and then lip balm, eyeliner if I'm feeling particularly happy that day, which is rare. We didn't talk about the noodles. Yeah, June didn't try them because uh, she would have died uh, <laughs> based on how much chilies were in the stock, the stuff I sprinkled on top, and the jalapenos I put on top. Uh, as you guys probably know, it's hard for her to eat spicy foods because of, it aggravates her skin condition. Yeah, and also gluten does too. Like, if you ever look at my hands up close in videos, I hope you don't, you'll see that when my depression is bad, when my stress is bad, when I've eaten a lot of spicy food with Aaron, when I've eaten a lot of gluten things for developing recipes, they'll start flaking and uh, rashing up. And I have an autoimmune thing called lichen planus. Do not Google it, it is disgusting. And if it gets particularly bad, I can't sleep because it's so itchy and burny and painful. Um, so another reason to take care of yourselves and to actually go to sleep and to drink water and to stay away from foods that you know aggravate you is you'll just be better friends with your body. But the noodles were excellent. They were really nice and bouncy. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, how common using this like Yotiao dough is for noodles, but it works really well. And you know, Cook some, cook some dough in, in some boiling water and it'll probably turn out pretty tasty. Just try things and then get back to me if you discover the next big thing and then we can go viral. Guys, we can go viral together. And then we can raise lots of money for charity and then we'll solve world hunger and we'll end all the wars and then we'll stop human greed and then we'll be perfect. We'll be in a utopia. Right? <laughs> um... Okay. Wow. That was an hour. Bye. Hit me up on Instagram if you want to see this again with ideas. Comment down below. Subscribe. I don't know all the things. I guess we're a YouTuber now. Have a great day.